Hi, this is Charlie Green, co-author of The Trusted Advisor, which is where we first wrote about the trust equation. Let me start by saying it really should be the trustworthiness equation. Trustworthiness is one half of what creates a personal relationship of trust. The other half is trusting. One party takes a risk to trust the other, so they are trusting, and the other proves to be, or not to be, trustworthy. We are going to focus on what it means to be trustworthy. So let's dive into trustworthiness through the trust equation. The format is a simple equation, C plus R plus I, all over the denominator S. Let's look at each of these components in turn. When we say someone is trustworthy, what do we mean? The first component is credibility. That can mean, for example, that the person is competent and capable and has relevant credentials. Perhaps the person is a subject matter expert. Basically, the person knows things. And while credibility is largely a cognitive trait, there are also some emotional factors. For example, does the person give us confidence? Do we feel and believe that the person is telling the truth? The second component is reliability. Where credibility had to do with words and ideas, reliability deals with actions. Reliability means that we can trust the person to do what they said they'd do, that they have a good track record, and that they are consistent. While reliability is largely behavioral, it also has emotional elements. For example, does the person understand our frame of reference so that when they promise us something, we are confident they understand what we mean? Both credibility and reliability are largely rational forms of trustworthiness. That's because they are objective. We can easily find ways to measure and score a person's credibility and reliability. The other two components are quite different. The third component of the numerator, which also raises someone's trustworthiness score, is intimacy. Intimacy means feeling emotional security in dealing with us. A high score on intimacy means we feel safe sharing information with that person. There is confidence that the person will handle that information respectfully and appropriately. Related terms include emotional intelligence, vulnerability, and empathy. Intimacy explicitly addresses the concept of risk, emotional riskiness, on the part of both truster and trustee. However, unlike credibility and reliability, it is difficult both to describe and to measure intimacy. It requires different approaches to understanding and evaluating. So far we have addressed the three terms in the numerator, all of which raise a person's trustworthiness score. Now it's time to look at the factor in the denominator, self-orientation. Self-orientation goes the other way. A high level of self-orientation results in a low level of trustworthiness. This is the one factor that significantly cuts trustworthiness, regardless of how great a person is with credibility, reliability, and intimacy. The most obvious form of high self-orientation is selfishness, a sense that the person is in it for themselves and not for others. Although in business, pure selfishness is typically not the main issue. That's because it's pretty easy to spot. The bigger challenge in business is self-obsession, a tendency to see all things as being about ourselves rather than about the other person. People with high self-orientation are always worried. Will I close the deal? Will they believe me? Will this advance my career? Will I say something stupid? What if they ask me a tough question? The simplest way to describe self-orientation is evaluating how much a person cares and shows awareness and interest in other people. If a person is high in self-orientation, it feels like they don't care about us. Because after all, they're not even paying attention to us. They are all wrapped up in themselves. By contrast, a low self-orientation person comes across as caring about us. At least they care enough to pay attention to us, rather than being obsessed with how everything affects them. And it shows up in very subtle but important ways. For example, when a consultant shows up at a client meeting, does that person take the lead and dive into the stated agenda? Or does that person first pause and say, I want to make sure this is still the agenda that you want to discuss and that this is still the best use of time for you? You can see a low self-orientation person is very intentionally concerned about the needs of others and consistently shows up that way. Like intimacy, self-orientation is difficult to describe and measure. 
Nonetheless, we all know very well when we are dealing with someone who is high in self-orientation and someone who is not, and we know very well which one we'd rather deal with. A lot more can be said about the trust equation, and I'll talk more in other videos. But let me leave you with two points. First, the trust equation is a model, hopefully a good and useful one, but still just a model. Its main purpose is to get us thinking about trust and trustworthiness. Breaking trustworthiness into four components makes it a lot more practical than dealing with just one huge concept. Ask yourself, and ask your friends and colleagues, where do your strengths and weaknesses lie? And that leads to the second point. When it comes to trustworthiness, you will get more benefit from addressing your weaknesses than from increasing your strengths. The reason is because we perceive that someone who is consistent across all four components is balanced, whole, complete, and in sync. By contrast, someone who is imbalanced across the four components is perceived as lacking in coherence, consistency, and balance, at odds with what we want in someone to trust. So, have the courage to face up to your biggest trust challenges. It will serve you well.